All right, folks, so this week I'm meeting up with Nate Weber and Jordan Jonas, who is on season six, and we're gonna talk about our experiences on Alone, so let's jump right into it. The, the hardest decision I made was probably day 15, and it was knowing that I was low down probably 25 pounds. Mm -hmm. And do I spend it all and cross the creek daily, which means taking off all my clothes, mm -hmm. walking across this waist deep, frigid water, and then getting on the other side and hiking up in the hills and staying, is, is that, is that calorie, calorie expenditure a good risk or should I stick to fishing? Right. Where I've already been, I've caught a bull trout, I've caught rainbows, right, I've, right. I've seen potential where I almost landed one. So I was like, God dang man, that's the hardest choice because then you always go hindsight. Should I? Maybe I should have, yeah. Should yeah. I have created a remote camp somewhere and found it? But I hiked that hole. I crossed the creek and I went up in the mountains and I didn't see any sign of any deer on that side. So it was yeah. frustrating for me to weigh the, to have to weigh those options. Yeah. I kind of uh, did that with the rabbits versus fishing because I fished first and just didn't yeah. have any luck. So then I went to rabbits. But then after like so long of living on rabbits, I was like, oh man, those don't keep. You know, I was like, of course, everybody knows about rabbit starvation. Yeah, but yeah, I was yeah. like, I don't know if it takes six months to kick in or if it's like right <laughs> away or what. I was like, could I stretch it out a year on rabbits? But no, it's like you basically lose rate at the fat weight at the same rate as anybody else when That's you're eating right. rabbits. So I, uh, it like in hindsight, I was like, "Crap, maybe I should have just stuck with fishing and forget the rabbits," you know. But uh, of course, they were. I think they paid for all my activity, which helped me like yeah, and it's my a psychological land. boost to be and I, yeah, yeah, and it's just having to eat it, you at least know? you get a win, win, win. You know, yeah. like yeah, and that fun. place didn't have that option. I think so. I think if my fishing had failed mm -hmm. more, might not, I would have left. Yeah, I would have focused more on the hunt. But I felt like I had bit, such yeah. a a potential with that. I don't know. I that's mean, a, that, that's a great point though. You think about like, for me, I've thought about it. Like if my fishing was better, right. I may never have gone hunting. Right. right. And so uh, that's one of the things that, that really I learned deeply out there is like we, something happens and we rush to label it as good or bad. Right. And you yeah. know, it, by, you know, my fishing, it was terrible. And of course, if you have that and you're relying on that for your food, you're like, oh, this is terrible, this is bad. But yeah. it's not really, it's just how we label it. It's right. just something that happens and it's how you respond to it. It's a matters. level of struggle. And that was a, that to me, the fishing was, was easy. That day four, I landed a bull trout with just a single line in. Yeah. So I was like, oh, if I can just improve on this a little bit, the pier's gonna help. I'll put a set line in, I'll make better flies. So I saw that, went through that decision that I can catch a fish. I caught a fish, I can catch more. Mm -hmm. And so that really put me geared into figuring the fishing out because I saw promise there. And then we had that stretch where there was Absolutely, nothing touching yeah. for days. And I don't I, think anybody was catching no, anything. No, I think the next fish I caught was day 13 yeah. before we could go hunt any buck. And so I was like, at that point I had decided I'm still going hunting because fishing's not panning out. Right. So I had decided to go, but I didn't put a lot of like a remote camp or go spend the night up in the woods and see what's moving you know do something like that well you'd want to see and, sign to yeah. like encourage you to do that That's, yeah. i didn't on those walks i didn't see any i saw one print not that it was a beaten path just one rogue right. deer and i don't know what it was there's no guarantee it was in a doe yeah <laughs> so i was like i can't mm -hmm. sit here on this one print it's not even a heavy beaten path so yeah, i was can't like afford to sit there right on the off chance that the only deer that is which may not even still be on your place when yep. I walk by. Right. You know, so right. It was, I mean, for my deer, it was like, and I said it on there, I can't, I cannot believe I killed a deer. Because mm -hmm. if I had been dropped there on a hunt, I'd have packed up my stuff and, and I'd have walked 50 miles yeah, in the freighter yeah. I said river. the same thing. I yeah. said exactly <laughs> the same thing. I would not have stayed there. Yep. Because right. there was just not very much game. I think I said that like on day 12. If I was allowed to leave, I would have left a week ago. Yeah. For both of you guys, uh, was what was it vastly different than what you had envisioned, or did you try to not envision anything before going out? Or our territory, you know, like on our, yeah, my land, I couldn't help but envision it a little bit because our location was similar to Siberia, like oh, yeah. uh, latitude-wise. Yeah. And so, ah, oh, that's cool. Like, you know, hopefully it's familiar. You know, I can right. imagine. Okay, well, in Russia, I lived off of 
grouse and grayling and <laughs> you know like I'd like I know what's out there lots of bear lots of you know you know what you're gonna see and so berries of course what was funny about my particular spot was it those first things that pop in the head mind I was like okay plan a go out and get a bear and then you know well first go get some fish bait pile bear you know like, right. I was like my right. plan and then uh when I got to my territory you're we flying in on the helicopter and I was like no because it was just like You'd see it was shallow, you know, from the helicopter. It's like, no, no, no. And then they drop me down. <laughs> it's like a burn. So there's no berries. So you know there's not going to be any bears. But, uh, you know, then you just kind of adapt. I was I was upset for the first week or so. I was just like, man, dang it. But then you, just have to, you have to kind of uh, you know, adapt your plan. And, you know, I did have rabbits. And so I was leaning heavily into the rabbits. And then once I... Got signed. But it, yeah, to answer your question, it was you try not to picture it too much. You're like, well, I'm just going to see what happens. But I definitely, my prior experience had given me a idea of what yeah. to expect. And I, I actually, I think I, the production told us that the, Roland and I complained the most about our spots. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny. But I think it might be because if you go to a place that you have a familiarity with. Right. Like, you know, that you did zone have or whatever. Yeah, you kind of can't help but have some expectations. And then you know what, how you've lived there, what you would do. Yeah. And then it doesn't line up and you're like, ah. I don't, the I don't think I had. I don't, I don't, I think that going into it through the orientation that we started finding out more and more the restrictions on what we could and couldn't do I, I try to stay optimistic on that mm -hmm. so even even in that I was like we'll figure it out it's just mm -hmm. another puzzle I'll we'll figure mm -hmm. it out but I didn't I had uh, hopes of what kind of terrain after you know scouting out and doing recon map recon of the area and what satellite photos looked I thought everything was sloping that I was going to get a spot that would have some uphill where I could build a shelter, a dugout. I could do all the things that I wanted, my plan. And for me to get the washout that was this, this, the creek bed, everything was flat. I was like, well, I did have that expectation that I was you know, disappointed I couldn't shelter up the way I wanted to. But it wasn't, I think everything, no matter what was happening and all the negativity that we would feel, you think r restrictions, I say negativity, but restrictions, mm -hmm. I just stayed optimistic. I was just, I just saw it as another piece of the puzzle. It's just a, it's a puzzle. I have to figure it out. It's another problem I have to solve. So I didn't really put too much in it to be disappointed when I saw it. I just said, this is what I've been handed. I'm going to make it work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you feel the same? Did you have that, that concept? Uh, yeah. I mean, I went into it with that, but on the boat ride in, I could see that burn towards yeah. the back of my area. And that Excited, got me yeah. thinking, you know, um, and especially once I started walking around, like when they dropped me, you know, my site was all lodgepole and yeah. lodgepole is like a very unproductive yep, community forest, type. Yeah. And so I wasn't seeing any deer sign. And then I had planned on waiting until we could hunt any buck to walk to that burn. But just through my ramblings, I found myself very close to it. So I just popped over there and that's that episode, whatever one. it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and it's yeah, yeah. just jack strawed you know, and there's nothing in there. There's yeah. no deer. I saw, I actually did see one deer track in there. But it's like, what do you do with one deer track? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, 5,000 acres. That's exactly how Same I thing, thought. Nate. Was yep. <laughs> yeah. Same thing. Yeah. yeah. I will say, watching that episode, one of my favorite things about that show is when people have successes and, like, relating to that pure joy that's really hard to repeat in in yeah. life for whatever Scripted reason life, you know yeah. like yeah. in modern yeah. life you have a hard time repeating when those stakes are that high when you've like tried so hard for something and put so all, every bit of your effort into in this creating opportunity or whatever it is and then you have some success and so yeah like with that deer and stuff it's just like i can I definitely feel people's joy there was a it's just like man what a there was wow. a comment <laughs> online that someone was complaining of why do contestants thank the unit thank the animal or anything when they yeah and that you think about it from i don't thank anybody when i have breakfast or lunch that's easy to come by but when you're starving it's you're this long journey it's gratitude not, yeah. i think i commented and said i'm not thanking the animal or the fish mm -hmm. it's to me it's the same as working to release one bolt while working on my truck that's taking me 40 minutes to get it to crack and then finally I figured out, it cracks and I say, oh, 
thank God I can move on to the next <laughs> task. That's what it, I'm starving and I, I catch a fish. To me, it's, it's a release. Thank God this came through all this effort. It so. is a release. You mentioned it. I know I said it on my, I don't know if it was on the show or not, but it really feels like a burden on you, right? It does. Like, like you are going to starve. I just felt like there was something non at the back of my neck. Like, you're going to starve. You're going to starve. Yeah. You're gonna starve. <laughs> and when you get something like you're that, like, you just like slay that little demon for a little that's while. That's right. <laughs> it's like, oh, man. But it's, you said it, too. You so, you said the deer's not going to last the whole time. So you still, you, know, long, yeah, you knew. You get the pivot and you, move forward. You know, that, that's the same as, as seeing a negative, that you could quit on a negative. If You can't quit on a positive out there either because you nope. realize you're in the thick of it all the time. Yeah. So you, you can't, can't stop moving forward. Yeah, there's no place. Yeah, and that, that was really apparent even on my season because you're just like, wow, the pressure is really on. Like, you get one thing down, and it's like you got a few days to preserve it, get it all squared yeah, away, and then you move it. on to the next. You know, <laughs> like, you right. have to keep moving forward. It really, I mean, I, I think a very big advantage is to be the type of person that doesn't have a lot of skeletons in your closet. Like, a lot of people say, oh, you need to be really introverted and not want to be around people and it's like i don't no. think that's the case i think what you really need is to have healthy relationships <laughs> to be like yeah whether you're introverted or extrovert doesn't really matter just as long as you have like a solid foundation you're not going out there and going to be like worried about what's going worried on. about what's all back home yeah. about loose ends you haven't tied or and, and those are all things that you might not yeah. ever think about in normal life because you you know, checking Facebook that's and right. doing stuff. And that's and the big. That's the biggest thing is that the fear of people going to see me for who I know I am, but uh, don't portray. Uh, like, yeah, is, yeah. The, is my reflection true? Like who we see when we look in the mirror, who we really see when we look at ourselves with self and when we self reflection, but yet we present to the world a different person. So if those two people are are contrasted and are different. Mm-hmm. You're gonna have a hard time out there. Yeah. You're gonna have a hard time because you're gonna to have to face your flaws, and and that's what we see those as. Is that's we we our insecurities, if you will, or whatever comes up. It's if those two images, who you are inside and who you present to the world, are the same person, you're not gonna have a problem in this kind of a challenge. Mm-hmm. Because you, you don't have part, that. Yeah. yeah. You don't have the alone <laughs> part. You don't have the. You have to be alone with yourself with no distractions. Right. And today, and I'd say in the last. You know, 70, no 70 to... years it's changed drastically. Oh, for sure. Where we're so distracted yeah. with all these things to occupy our time that we never really think about us. Mm-hmm. If you don't, you said it the best too, is the, the no skeletons in the closet kind of thing. Oh, right. That you have to face yourself in those times. And in this modern world, we, we tend to distract ourselves from the true part that we don't want to deal with. We don't ever, we don't ever have the chance to, to even know who we are. I, yeah, I that's think a lot I, of the I would, time. Yeah, I would agree mm-hmm. with that. It's yeah. more and more so now. And then exactly. on top yeah. of that, it's like anytime, anytime we get any criticism from anyone, you know, you're, you're always defending. You're always right. defending that, that projection of yourself. Well, out there, there's nobody to defend it. To. It's just you. It's just you, and, and so you know all the of truth. that defense goes yeah. away, and then you're left with your true self. Yeah. And that's mm-hmm. how you come to know yourself. Yeah, yeah. You go through massive struggle, and you're and you face it. Yeah, I feel like that's a major. That's pro, That's one of the reasons why people, so many people, are so unhappy today. Yeah, because I do they too. never have. They never have any real, true moment struggle. Yeah, and they, they don't know who they are. That's do you right. guys feel like for yourselves after the experience there was like any? Uh, Awakening. Ego check or something like how about how do you, how you view yourself or how you like want is it or is it or do you feel like i think you know, your that, ego yeah. could be a become a problem or something like that or is there is that something that was addressed at all on the show in a positive or negative way yeah. I, don't know. I didn't feel like i had any issues with ego right um you know like like nate was saying i think that the person that i am on camera or on my youtube channel that's genuine just, that's just yeah, yeah 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 um, I don't try to be something that I'm not. Mm-hmm. Um, no. I tell you one thing that did come become very like um, brought to my attention was how important my family is. Yeah, yeah that's nothing I think that's, like that. Yeah, I yeah. think that's some that's very common, you know, for people to like. And I, Realize, you know, you, yep. you you love your family. You know that mm-hmm. you know that your family is important to you. But when you're out there, it's like 
you, really you don't realize. Yeah, yeah, you, you don't you, really realize yeah. until it's not there. Yeah. To me, it's an, another way to look at it is, is you don't recognize as, as much the growth of your child. Because you're around your child until you're not around that child. It's like right. a cousin or a nephew that you haven't seen in two years and they're shoot up. They're yeah. shoot up or they're different and they talk different. That's that same concept is that you're surrounded by it every day. You don't see the changes as drastic. So it, it grows on you and, and you're not you're not as appreciative of the differences. That but, was one of the things I really you know, a practical thing that I yeah. thought about out there was like, Man, I really gotta take each of the kids on individual dates. Oh, make sure yeah. they know they're special. Make sure you know. And yeah. I was like, when I get home, I gotta follow through on that. And it it's hard to follow through because, like you say, it's like slow. Yeah. You know, you have to constantly remind. You yourself. have to remind yourself of yeah. what's important and where your priorities are. Yeah. And, uh, I try to tell my kids, anytime you're ready, just take three days and disappear into the the woods because we have enough property up there, and it's there's we can go far in and. And just go three days and find yourself and go see the struggle. Be hungry the next day. You know, go hunt, take a gun, shoot a squirrel, cook it up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, do whatever you want. But take, if you can take three days and isolate yourself and just do a three day challenge, you're going to learn. Even in three days, you're going to learn a lot from your, just leave your phone at home, any technology, just go out in the woods, just you take your, pick 10 items or whatever you want to do, pack 20. But right. don't take any tech, just bring you to entertain yourself. Start a fire, sit there and think. I mean, it doesn't take long for you to get in your head. That's all you can do. I'm so glad I could watch that episode with you. That's what I wanted to do. It's <laughs> 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 <sighs> my best show. Best showing ever. <laughs> but anyway, we'll have to go race helicopters right. sometimes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> There he goes. <laughs> <laughs> <Sucker. Jordan. laughs> well, that was a fun time. I really enjoyed meeting up with those guys again and talking about our experiences. But after this, I actually tagged along with those guys on one of Jordan's wilderness survival camps where we took a, a horse packing trip actually back up into the Selway Bitterroot Wilderness. And I've got a bunch of video from that, so I'm gonna be posting some of those videos here before too long, so keep an eye on the YouTube channel for that. And again, if you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe, and then also click that little bell icon so you'll get notified. And I'm looking forward to the next episode of Alone to see what happens, so we'll see you there.